Studio Ghibli can't make a bad movie. Studio Ghibli can't make a bad movie. If I keep saying it, it'll be true, right? I guess not. What's going on you guys, James here with another real review and today I'm diving into Earwig and the Witch, a Studio Ghibli movie directed by Goro Miyazaki, the son of Hayao Miyazaki. So I'm super excited for this film, or at least I was very excited for the movie. It's debuting on HBO Max this Friday, so a huge thank you to HBO Max for giving me the chance to screen this early for review. This is a film that has all the makings of a cute PG movie that really is going to cater to kids and I was hoping it was going to cater to adults, but guys, I'm here to tell you that this movie does not do that. Now, it doesn't do a lot of things very well, but before I dive into what didn't work in this movie, guys, if it is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James, where I review movies really like this all the time, so if you don't want to miss out, go ahead and hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, and tap on that bell so you can be the first one in the comments to let me know what you think of the movie, and honestly, if you're excited for it, because this is one film where I'm curious to see how you guys feel about the film and guys if you haven't already smash that like button because it does a ton to help the channel out and you know what it's time let's not beat around the bush let's get into earwig and the witch this is studio ghibli's first cgi animated film and it follows an orphan girl named earwig who is adopted by a witch and comes home to a spooky house filled with mystery and magic it has all the makings of a very cute film one that will definitely test your imagination and i was very excited to sit down for this one well, I was excited for the first like 10 minutes. And in those first 10 minutes, I noticed that the animation is pretty solid and the lighting is really what caught my eye. There is some of that Studio Ghibli charm in this film right in the beginning, but unfortunately that is wasted away very quickly. Now, I will tell you I watched this, not dubbed, I watched the subtitled because I am just doing that out of preference. I did that with A Whisker Away last year, and the reason I do that is because I want to watch the movie the way it was intended to be heard, and I'll read the subtitles, I don't mind, but not even that could have even given this movie a leg up, because guys, outside of the animation looking okay and the lighting being pretty impressive, what I will say is that, well... This is a complete miss for Studio Ghibli. The story here does have a little bit of promise, but unfortunately it's never fully realized. So yes, the writing in this movie is a huge issue. I get that maybe PG movies have to be toned down, but the best animated feature films, heck, even Studio Ghibli for the most part, the way they're able to find success with every single audience member is because they both cater to kids and to adults but this movie couldn't find the balance for either. And it's really disappointing to see Goro Miyazaki's name attached to this because I honestly thought he might hit a home run here. This was a very daunting task though, it being the first CGI animated feature, all eyes are on him. And unfortunately, the majority of this movie is incredibly directionless. There was something very interesting about Earwig in the beginning of the film that director Goro Miyazaki just never dove into. And then when we get introduced to the Mandrake and then we get introduced to another witch, it just seems to me that nothing about this movie flowed. Everything was kind of placed in in weird places and the narrative was chugging along. Honestly, that is a huge issue for me as well. In the middle of the movie, the film just drags its feet through the mud. I kept asking myself, what is the story telling me? It sort of just goes from scene to scene without saying much. There's even this certain reveal in the very early part of the first act that I almost wish it didn't come until a little bit later in the movie because it takes away a lot of the allure and the storytelling that maybe could have been developed as the story went on. But unfortunately, we get stuck with something that is just not enjoyable. And for a movie that boasts its main character screaming into a microphone in what seems to be a rock and roll setting, I figured, okay, this movie's soundtrack should be pretty fun. But no, it's just a chaotic mess. There's even some scenes where the Mandrake gets really upset, he's fuming, and then a huge guitar riff just comes out of nowhere. Quite frankly, every time the score sort of erupts, it just feels out of place. And even the animation after a while just started to really wash away. It really looked bland for the most part. And when we get towards the end of the film, it even fails to hit a home run. Like, guys, this should have been a film where, yes, it's testing out being the first CGI animated feature for Studio Ghibli, but at least the heart of the story should have been intact. But here, man, the movie is just soulless. It doesn't have any magic. For as much magic as Earwig was playing around with, with these witches and whatnot, there's no magic to be found in the script, let alone the overall film. 
The movie just feels so hollow and it doesn't ever find a certain stride that works for it. And then when we enter into the third act, I really felt like nothing substantial had happened. I was checking my watch, I was watching the popcorn on my ceiling at one point because it just really didn't work for me. And then when I tried to refocus my gaze onto the film, again, it looked okay. But outside of all that glitz and glamour we're seeing on screen, there's nothing underneath the surface. This movie needed another layer to it, and it tries to give some sort of cute appeal with this cat named Thomas, but Thomas and Earwig are two characters that never really had a synergy to them. There's no chemistry with anyone in this film, and even the voice actors, to me, felt like they were just going along with the flow of things. They were just reading from the paper, and I kind of wanted a little bit more out of that department too. Earwig and the Witch is really just one of those movies that if you watch it, you'll be disappointed, but if you missed it, well, you're probably better off because Studio Ghibli is one of those studios that has an amazing track record. Maybe they have some misses every now and then, but even their misses are better than this film. That's my big issue with Earwig and the Witch, is that it comes with a certain expectation, at least for me it did and it failed to even get close to reaching that bar. And in 2021, I guess anything is possible, but I never thought I would come to you and tell you guys that Earwig and the Witch is one of the worst movies I think I'm gonna see this year. This movie just really lacks direction. It needed a purpose, and honestly, it felt like a tech demo that was used to pitch a movie, but instead that became the entire film, and that's a problem. So overall, you guys, Earwig and the Witch is a definite miss for not only Studio Ghibli, but for fans that were really looking forward to the next project from this amazing studio. This is a prime example of what not to do with an animated movie. It might look good, but it needs to have a concrete story. And that's what's missing from Earwig and the Witch. So guys, I need to know your thoughts down below in the comments. Did you feel the same way I did when you see this film? And hey, what's your favorite Studio Ghibli movie? Because I'm going to have to go in and clean my mouth out after what I just witnessed with this film. And if you haven't already, smash that like button and hit the big red button below. Subscribe to the channel, guys, if you haven't already. And tap on that bell because we got some exciting reviews this week. Malcolm and Marie is on the way. I have my review for Judas and the Black Messiah on Monday. But right before that... WandaVision reactions this Friday. I cannot wait, you guys. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening. And for the record, Spirited Away is definitely my favorite Studio Ghibli movie.